Good evening and welcome to the Watson Lecture Series. Tonight's lecture will be presented by Michael E. Brown, Professor of Planetary Science. Mike Brown received his bachelor's degree in physics from Princeton University and then a PhD in astronomy from the University of California at Berkeley. He has been at Caltech ever since, first as a postdoctoral research fellow and then rising through the ranks of the faculty to full professor in 2003. Mike Brown is a remarkably inventive scientist. He has designed strategies for looking for and searching for distant and dim objects. He has used his observations to say profound things about the formation and evolution of the solar system. He is also inventive in his choice of names. This has led to several satirizations uh, on The Daily Show by, um, and, and in addition, uh, to all of the great mail that he receives, lobbying for interesting names. Much of these uh, are very direct. Ruby, for example, suggests that maybe Ruby would be an excellent name. <laughs> Others, equally heartfelt, suggest that Planet Lila, named after his infant daughter, would be an excellent name. Tonight, to tell us about Planet Ruby, or Lila, or whatever, is Michael Brown, Professor of Planetary Science. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. So I, I'm, I appreciate all of you being here tonight because I know that uh, most of you would rather be home watching the finals of curling in the Olympics, <laughs> and so. I can tell you the results. If, if anyone asks in the question period who won, um, but I'm going to hand it's the US team did not win. <laughs> so those of you who've been following the story of, of the 10th planet um, probably know that there's been a little bit of question about whether to call it a planet or not. And for, for those of you who, who really feel strongly, I, and I don't want to offend anybody, we have an alternate title, which is the 10th planet. <laughs> and you can, it's OK. I don't mind if you call it that. But there are other people who are sort of offended by the, the number 10, that maybe there are more planets, and we shouldn't even call it that, and we can call it the 10th <laughs> planet, and that's OK, too. And just because I want to cover all bases, the real title is just this. <laughs> so please don't be offended. Whatever you think, this is OK. So the reason for all of this question about whether this, this thing that we're going to talk about tonight is a 10th planet um, really starts actually here in Pasadena, or not quite in Pasadena, but actually on Mount Wilson, almost exactly 100 years ago, with, with Percival Lowell, who was searching for what he called Planet X. Now, Planet X was whatever that, that planet was beyond Neptune, and he thought he knew where it was. He thought he knew where it was because he had watched Neptune move through space, and Neptune moved slightly differently than it should have, and he thought, there must be another planet tugging on it. Turns out that he was using data that was wrong, um, and there is no planet tugging on Neptune that's moving its orbit. So his calculation was, was a good calculation using data that was wrong, not for his fault, but he, but he thought he knew where to look. So he went up to Mount Wilson, and uh, this was before there were any roads. This was before there were any big telescopes up there. He, he drug along his big photographic plates. He took a picture of the sky right where planet X should be, and there it was. <laughs> you guys see it, right? Yeah. It's right there. Um, this is actually, this, this is not the picture that he took, but this is actually a picture of the discovery of the planet Pluto, um, which, which turns out to have been the next planet after Neptune, although not the massive planet X that Clyde Tombaugh thought he, uh, Percival Lowell thought he was looking for. Percival Lowell took a picture that looked probably more or less like this, stared at it, and said, uh, that's, there's, there's no planet there. And the reason he thought there was no planet there is because he was looking for something big. Something big. Like, if, if Saturn had been in this picture, it would be about, this thing does not work, it would be about this big, with rings going like this. You, it would have been kind of obvious that that was a planet. <laughs> Here, how do you know which one is Pluto? Pluto is in this picture, but how do you know which one it is? The way that you find a planet when you don't know how big it is, 
was, was finally figured out by, by Clyde Tombaugh, who at, at a very young age had been hired off of a farm in Kansas to go work at the Lowell Observatory, founded by Percival Lowell. Um, and after Percival Lowell had died, uh, a new telescope went in, and they were dedicated to finding this new Planet X. And Clyde Tombaugh came in, and he realized he took pictures pictures like this, and he thought, how do I know it's a planet? And he realized the only way to know is to look for something that moves. All of the planets in the solar system move across the sky. If you look out tonight as you go out, you can see Jupiter and Saturn up in the sky. If you look in the next week or so, they're in slightly different positions. The same thing happens for all the planets. So all you have to do, Clyde Tombaugh figured out, all you have to do is take a picture of the sky, come back the next night, take another picture of the sky, and look for something that moves. It's as simple as that. And there it is. You guys saw it, right? So it's, it was the one that moved. Um, let me, let's try it again, if you missed it. Here's night one, night two. Anybody see it? Yeah, liars. Um, night one, <laughs> night two. Do you see it? All right, all, uh, raise your hand if you think you saw it. Okay, all right, okay. I'm not sure why, but the fourth time, everybody seems to see it. Night one, <laughs> night two. Okay, so of all you people who, who raised your hand, who really saw it in the right place? Okay, good. A couple of people actually saw it. Okay, that's good. So without the arrows, there it is. Pluto, night one. Pluto, night two. And that's, that's the only way that you know that that's not just... All these other things are stars. There's a galaxy in here somewhere. There's a, a little smear of a galaxy. But all the stars, all the galaxies, they stay in the same place night after night. And the planets... Uh, was it this one? Yeah, okay, the, planet, the planets move. And it doesn't look like anything other than a little, I, I've, I've given this talk enough that I can finally find it, because um, I know it has that little tail going off of it. Um, but the planets are the only things that move. When Clyde Tombaugh found Pluto, even he was surprised at how faint it is. It's a tiny little speck of light in the sky. He thought he was looking for Percival Lowell's planet X. He thought it was a big object he was looking for, not some very small faint, is it that one? No, that, that one. It's a very, very small, faint little object. And, um, and this is the beginning of the problem of what is and isn't a planet. The beginning of the problem is that, that Pluto is actually quite small. It's even smaller than, than uh, Clyde Tombaugh thought, thought. It's actually smaller than the moon. Most, most people don't even realize it's, it's actually about half the size of the moon. Um, as, as planets go, the next lo smallest planet is Mercury. Mercury would be about this big. Mars would be about this big. Pluto was a tiny little thing out there at the edge of the solar system. It really doesn't fit the pattern of the other planets. Even possibly more strange is if you look at the orbits, how they go around the sun of the planets, these are the, the four outer planets, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, the Earth and, and all the other planets would be inside here. And they're all on very nice circular orbits. They're all in the same disk that the whole solar system is in. If you put Pluto into that picture, Pluto is on this very odd elliptical orbit, unlike anything else that had been found in the solar system at the time. And if I turned this picture on its edge, you would see that Pluto is tilted by 20 degrees compared to all the other planets. It just makes no sense. So even back when it was discovered in, in 1930, there was a big debate. What should we call it? Should we call it a planet? Well, it doesn't actually look like or act like the other planets. Should we call it a comet? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't act like a comet. Comets have these big tails that everybody's seen. It doesn't look like a comet. Should we call it an asteroid? Well, all the asteroids